Landell is one of the least livable cities in the entire world. It is filled with crime, corrupt cops, and perfume addicts. An incapable king rules over it. The only source of water in the city takes its water directly from the sewer. It is a truly disgusting place, but in such a revolting city can one find true love. Apparently my seedbed is ripe and waiting. Let's find out. The first part of Landell you come across is the outer wall. There is not much here in the way of city life. There are no water fountains, park benches, or people walking their dogs. Just massive bird things and a random war got. Hello. You can actually fight Morgoth before his boss fight. In the original Margit boss fight, which is actually just Morgoth in disguise, at the start of the cutscene you can see him transform some random guy into his clone. He does the same thing here. First he talks mad smack, and then the guy turns into him. I feel like From Software should have done more with this. Can you imagine the horror if any enemy could just randomly start roasting your fake Jordans before it turns into Morgoth and beats your ass? There is a flock of bow giants that keep taking shots at your ass on your way to the big city. It accurately simulates the morning commute you experience in any big city. The guard of the entrance to Landell is the Draconic Tree Sentinel. I had a lot of trouble with him on my first playthrough, but through the power of New Game Plus, he was no trouble. The bridge after him is quite interesting. You can see old friends. Hi and something new. From this point, you can get a good look at the Forbidden Lands when they are not shrouded in darkness. They look just as boring as they actually are. I'm not sorry Forbidden Lands fans. You know I'm right. From Software intelligently put this view of the Erd Tree here. It's basically them just saying, bro look, it's the looming thing that looms. It's so nice to finally be so close to the objective of the game. A lot of games like to have looming things, but I feel that the Erd tree is one of the best looming things in the history of looming things. After such an amazing view, Melina immediately divorces you. This would be sad, but she lets you keep the dog, so it's not all bad. You get a good look at the ruined city and the giant pigeon that dominates its landscape. However, you see something far more interesting. You meet a turban guy. They are called envoys. Envoys are great at dodging. They basically just shoot bubbles of piss at you. Really disgusting stuff. Envoys appear and play their piss horns to herald the arrival of a new age. They also appear to bleed white, which implies they could be related to the Albanorix. Apparently you can hear faint whimpering inside of their cloth. Envoys are very weird dudes. It is here where the cool design of Landell is first made apparent. You start above the area on this big wall, which means as you travel through the zone, you are descending. This means that there are plenty of opportunities for you to jump down into new areas. Maybe you are skipping a few rooms filled with dangerous fights, or jumping onto a roof and finding some items. You can get really creative with the paths that you take through this area. Running along the rooftops makes this game feel Feel like a scuffed Assassin's Creed. Through the buildings that you use to descend to street level, you will encounter perfumers. They were basically the pharmacists of the lands between. Perfumers used their stinky ass liquids to help people. However, because of the shattering, they began to use their perfumes to wage war. One such perfume is the piss stench. They can use it against you to great effect. It's really disgusting. Perfumers are really weird dudes. It also goes a bit further. You may have noticed a bunch of terribly addicted individuals during your adventures. These are called depraved perfumers. They literally sniffed their own farts to get high. That's canon. It's in the law. The abuse of their substances led them down a path of addiction. It's really tragic. On the ground floor of the perfumer's lair, you will find this bizarre corpse. It's just standing there, and it's completely indestructible. This was an incredible obstacle. I had finally met a foe that the power of New Game Plus could not defeat. But then it happened. I accidentally walked onto the sitting guy. A new path of mastery had opened to me. I jumped. At last. I had won. I had become the master of my own fate. Let it be known that there are no frozen indestructible corpses that I cannot mount. Actually, now that I say that out loud, maybe we should just move on. The streets of Landale are a tough place. I'm a bad boy. 
But you have to be to survive on the streets. These streets are thirsty. Thirsty for blood. Take this wide ass street for example. It's like the sort you might find in an outback town. You literally get jumped by a massive beast. Naturally, I turned around and ran the other way. I found sanctuary in an alleyway. There were only two enemies in here. Not a big deal. Turns out it was an ambush. On all sides, I was trapped. It was chaos. The corrupt Landell guard had brokered a deal with the Erd Tree Avatar. In return for luring me here, it would get a cut of the mugging. I ran for my life and the beast followed. Covered in blood, I fled in fear. It is very easy for things to get out of control in the streets of Landell. It's a real concrete jungle. Before you know it, you will be running away from hordes of enemies and then into even more enemies where you get trapped by a broken bridge. It just goes on and on. Next you head to another dead end and get trapped again. It's all good fun. There are actually multiple ways to progress from this area. The easiest way is probably just past the avatar and to the site of grace. But you can also go down this elevator or through this underground sewer tunnel, which leads past that side of Grace and to a ruined part of the city. This part of the city is a lot more quiet. There aren't really any hoodlums. Okay, there are some, but nothing murder cannot fix. You are forced to take this area a bit more slowly. For example, this room. This room is hell for people who like to run past all the enemies. Seriously, do not try it. Only after all of that do you link back up to a site of Grace. Probably the coolest part of this zone is the dead dragon. It's the focal point that your eyes are attracted to right from the start. There is a staircase under that you can take to some other locations, but why on earth would you choose to go below the cool dragon wing instead of on it? Well, it turns out there is actually a pretty disgusting reason, but we'll get to that later. Past here, you can come to one of those big mysterious arenas that you can find throughout the lands between. Most people seem to think that they were intended for PvP. I disagree. I I am fairly certain that they are actually homeless shelters. You cannot enter them because you have a home, which is the round table hold. I could not find any other places in the game resembling a homeless shelter, so these must be it. There is no way the government of the lands between would leave behind its most vulnerable people. There is also a group of homeless people sitting on a nearby cliff. You can sit with them and ponder. It's very enlightening. The divine bridge area can also be seen from here. That's the secret area you can get to through the Tower of Return. Soon you come across one of the coolest places in the game. Grove Street. Home. Yeah, it's that place you have already been to. Firelink Shrine. You can loot the armor of that man. That man you see in your waking nightmares. The waking nightmares that occur when you jump to the lower floor in Round Table Hold. It's very scary, but collecting this armor represents you conquering your fears. There is also one of those collectible paintings down here. If you did not know, you can actually go to the place shown in the painting for a reward. I have never done a single one of these, because because I am incredibly lazy. However, this painting inspired me. So I went on a life-changing journey to find the source of the painting. When I found it, I was rewarded with an awesome incantation. However, I cannot use it because I have no faith of the heart. So this was a complete waste of time. To get to the second floor, you have to go around the side of the joint. This is where it really gets familiar. However, there is a dark secret here. The most evil staircase in the entire game. At the end of it is an item that you can easily pick up if you know what you are doing. However, on my first playthrough, I did not. I ran down it so confidently, but in my hubris, I did not stop. I ran straight off the edge, and I did not even pick up the item. So I had to run all the way around again. It was a truly tragic sequence of events. In the room with the two fingers, you will find a big chair instead. It was most likely constructed for the leader of the round table hold. Judging by the size, they were most likely really large. So we can safely assume that it was your mother. Interestingly, there is a side area you can access from the bottom of the hold. It leads to the divine bridge site of grace. There are two abductor virgins. Even on New Game Plus, they are 
are really annoying and they really ruin this beautiful garden. However, I think that their presence has a more interesting implication. Abductor virgins are from Volcano Manor, which is ruled by Praetor Rikard, the weird snake guy. Through completing the questline of that area, you will find out that his organization works against the greater will. And through the description of the blasphemous claw, we learn that he might have assisted Rani in her betrayal on the night of the Black Knives. Therefore, the presence of the abductor virgins here potentially implies that Rikard is involved with the round table hold in some way. That potentially it was the organization he ruled over before he formed the assassins of Volcano Manor. The size of that chair could potentially befit the size of a demigod like Rikard. However, none of this is certain. If it is correct though, it has a massive earth shattering revelation that Rikard is your mother. The way to the palace of Landell is up the twisting roots of the Erd tree. There are a bunch of fart gas guys up here. Fortunately, you can just run past them and wash the smell out of your clothes. You get to fight this golden version of Godfrey. At first you would assume it is here to protect the Erd tree, but I think it is actually here to protect his son Morgot. Morgot is an omen and those are hated by the people of the lands between. And the Erd tree doesn't really need protecting because it is sealed by those thorns and Morgot is also there. The fake Godfrey is also golden like Morgot's magic. So this version of Godfrey is probably an illusion to stop the citizens of Landell from finding out his true omen nature. Potentially similar to Guinevere and Dark Anor Londo. Then again, maybe it is just a piss ghost created by the envoys and the perfumers. Man, those are really weird guys. After walking past this really large bed made for your mother, you reach the base of the Erd tree and finally meet Morgot. His boss fight is really cool. Morgot has this fruity sword that he uses for all sorts of fun flourishes. His piss magic does get really annoying though. The coolest part is the second phase though. He starts coughing because he choked on a Big Mac he ate before the fight. The liquid meat that McDonald's uses then coats the arena. This is the only time you really get to see the omen curse in action. The other time is during the dung eater ending. So it's cool to see its effects. Once you defeat him, he becomes just some guy again. You can even see markings on his head where his horns used to be. He calls you a failure and then dies. There is still one dark horrible secret present in Landell. This one actually has ramifications in real life if you do not interact with it. If you go through the other exit from Godfrey's arena, you will find another path which leads on. There is a completely unremarkable statue here that has no secret related to it. So you might as well completely ignore it because it is not important in any way whatsoever. Just past it is a really powerful foe. So powerful in fact that that gazing upon him will crash your game. Once you finally defeat him, you will find that he was guarding pretty much nothing, except for this roof. However, the true dark horrible secret is back along the pathway. You might glance an item resting on the big spear. This is incredibly important, for you see, if you complete Crumbling Farum Azula, without picking up this item, Landell will be replaced with Landell Ashen Capital, and the item will no longer be on the spear. You will never be able to get it again unless you go to New Game Plus. This means you cannot get the legendary armaments achievement without replaying the game. All you have to do is jump down and carefully walk up the spear. The item itself is kind of boring, but the satisfaction of the achievement is immeasurable. We can assume that the dragon was probably slain by one of the demigods in the past, which means that its corpse and spear has just been lying there for years. Imagine the traffic delays this would cause. Satisfied, I began to climb down the spear. However, disaster struck. You fought valiantly, but to no avail. Your adventure is done. This incident left me hospitalized as I lay there near death. I recalled my many regrets. What ones would I fix if I had a time machine? One stuck out in my mind, the Dung Eater. In my original playthrough, I brutally murdered him because I thought that was what he wanted. However, I was wrong. Maybe things could have been different. Maybe I could have completed his quest line. This of course would still result in him dying, but at least he would make funny sounds.
Once I respawned, I decided to conquer the loathsome dung eater, once and for all. You first find the loathsome dung eater inside of your own home. He let himself into it, rather than using one of the many homeless shelters throughout the lands between. After breaking into your house, he tells you that you do not interest him, but then after smelling you, he asks you to unshackle his corporeal flesh and says that he can kill you. Aww. This is the perfect house guest. You can find him down a well under the dragon in Lanedale. The well leads straight into a sewer jail. At first, this might seem like an awful idea, getting your drinking water from a sewer, but it actually works miracles on your pores and is great for weight loss. On account of all the parasites, this zone is actually rather hellish and maze-like. You would not expect this from a sewer zone. Fortunately, the dung eater is really easy to find. From the very first bonfire, you just jump down a hole and turn left. Honestly, if you missed this, you should be extremely disappointed in yourself. Your entire life should be filled with shame. There is this really annoying fight with a bunch of hands. You don't have to trigger their ambush, but real dung eaters will. They will welcome the fight. Once you are done, you will find him talking himself up as some big man, while he just bangs his head on the wall. All you have to do here is just open the door. You don't need to fight him or anything like that. I have no idea why anyone would think that was the right choice. Next, you return to your own home and find that he left after taking everything in your fridge. He says that he will defile you next and to come to the outer moat. So naturally, that is where I went. This is also the location where you can find those special crabs, the ones that have Godwin's face on their backs. While heading to the dead guy in the distance, Hi. you will even get jump scared by one of them. You just end up having a battle without honor or humanity. It's really easy because it's a really open area, so you can just outrun his spells. Eventually he dies because he sucks at the game. You will find that he has made himself at home in your home once again. He says that you are him and that he is the dung eater. At first, this line is funny because dung is funny. However, it actually indicates a pivotal realization the dung eater has had. By defeating him, you have made him realize that he is the one who must incubate the curse and that you will be the one to defile his flesh. So you literally have to do the mythical dung eater bang cutscene. Apparently my seed bed is ripe and waiting. In order to accomplish this feat, you need to give seedbed curses to his real body, which is now locked up in the place where you found it. Surprisingly, his quest is actually quite long, because it requires you to have access to the Halig tree in order to get all the seedbed curses you will need. The first ones that most people will come across are the two in Lanedale. There is one on top of the second building you come across, and another in the real version of Round Table Hold, the very same room that the Dung Eater was squatting in. There is also a third one you can get near Lanedell, but it requires that you complete Prawn Guy's questline, and it results in his death, which is really tragic. It's also completely pointless, because you will still need to go to the Halig Tree to get a seedbed curse anyway. There is one seedbed curse in Volcano Manor. It requires you to complete the entire zone normally, and right before the teleporter that takes you to the Rykard fight is a Stone Sword door. This leads you to a really big rune that you have to descend, and at the bottom is the seedbed curse. It is also worth mentioning that the exit of this area takes you to the start of Volcano Manor, but you can't actually travel back up the way you came, so that means you need to go back through the dungeon again in order to get the Rykard side of grace. How fun is that? The last two seedbed curses are the most annoying, as they require you to get all the way to the Halig Tree. This means that you need to fight that annoying Nile guy. The guy that simulates invasions for you, where you just get ganked. Easily the most fun and least frustrating boss in the entire game. You find half of the medallion that you need next to this ghost. He complains about never being able to see the Halig tree, yet literally a meter in front of him, you can see the Halig tree. This ghost is really stupid. No wonder he died. I wonder if anyone attended his funeral. You get the other half of the medallion from some dying old guy. He is is a way better person than Niall, because he just lets you have it and then dies.
Why couldn't Niall be more like this? After using the secret medallion at the lift, you get taken to a small dungeon. At first, this place is kind of a boring walk, but there is actually a cool secret here. If you pay attention, you might see this broken handrail, which is suspiciously on top of this open doorway. It turns out there is an invisible path here. You can follow it to an illusory wall, which gives you a bug. Bugs are cool, but also scary. If you are observant, you may spot this floating enemy, which leads you further into the dungeon. After this, you can then jump down onto a platform below and through a nearby window. This leads to a room filled with annoying enemies, but more importantly, a boss fight. It is here where I fought the strongest enemy in the entire game, myself. The only dude who is bad enough to beat myself is myself. So that's what I did. After this, you are rewarded with a journey through a snowstorm, where you get repeatedly jumped, eventually making it to Ordina Liturgical Town. This place is hellish. At first, it seems like some tranquil small town, kind of like Delhi or Shanghai. But then you find this statue. It implores you to light the four fingers. This sounds suspect. You then make the biggest mistake of your life. You enter the Ever Jail. At first, you think, oh, so it's like Ordina Liturgical Town, but scary. But it's beyond that. It's furtively frightful. Invisible black knife assassins appear and cap you. They deal so much damage. Lethal paraplegic archers bombard you. They deal so much damage. These albinorics also have heaps of health. If you backstab them, it deals a massive amount of damage though. Far more than you would expect. Once you have lit the four Mike Ehrman trouts, you can finally progress to the Halig Tree. The seed bed curses that you need are actually in the second half of the zone, so you need to progress through this canopy. It's infested with the weird piss guys, and they completely violate you. An absolutely disgusting adventure. You then have to beat up another paraplegic. It's pretty messed up, and serves to reinforce how evil helping the dung eater really is. After all of this, you can finally descend down to the Halig tree. The two seed bed curses are very close to the first sight of grace. You can reach the first curse through jumping over some railing and running into a dark room. The second is quite close to the first and requires that you do a few jumps and run to the end of a walkway. Now you are finally ready to bang the dung eater. All you have to do is return to the dung eater in the sewer jail. This time the hands aren't even here. You'll find the loathsome fellow tied up in a chair. All you need to do is give him the seed bed curses. He makes some silly sounds, some positively goofy gargles, a set of ridiculous reverberations. He then dies and gives birth to the mending rune of the fell curse, your child, which you can then use to see the dung eater's ending. What an ordeal that was. Honestly, after all of that, I no longer regret murdering him in my first playthrough. I'm glad I did it, and I would do it again, because poo is disgusting and I hate poo. So what exactly was the deal with Landell? Was it about the journey or the destination? Did we cross that bridge when we came to it? Was a bird in the hand really worth two in the bush? Did we count our eggs before they hatched? So many questions and so little time. Such is the way of life. However, if there is one lesson I hoped you had learnt from this video, it's that you should subscribe to my channel. It would look great on your resume.